years ago today on September 11th, a tragedy that changed all of our lives happened. Everybody, as you all remember that day, you know what you were doing, where you were at. Tonight, we're here together, laughing, enjoying our time together. The world's still not fixed, still broken. And I know there's a lot of craziness going on in these times, as it was in those times. But when that tragic event happened on September 11th, New York City, the world came together. And we just got to take that memory in the back of our head, that memory bank, and come together in these times and, and get through what we're all going through in these times, because it'll get better. But tonight, uh, tonight's show is uh, dedicated to the memory of the people we lost on that tragic event 20 years ago and to their family and friends. And I dedicate the show to you. Thank you. Welcome to our playlist, Artist Rewind, your ultimate intimate conversation with your favorite artist. Also, Check us out in Patreon. In there, you'll find an all-access VIP backstage pass that will unlock unedited content. So if there's some past show you want to see more of, well, it's in there. Plus, the first Saturday of each month, we are adding our vinyl showdown. And that's a game show for vinyl record lovers. That's right. For you vinyl junkies out there, you, you want to show off your vinyl records. This is the place. Now, coming up next, everybody, we have a friend of the show. You might have known him from maybe you saw the movie The Dirt, the biography about Mo Motley Crue on Netflix. Did replace Vince Neil for a short time in The Crew. Great album he did, but John's done a lot more after that. Now, John's going to talk about what he's doing now. He has a new single that he just released called Casa Bella. We're going to learn what it means, if I pronounced it right. And you know what? There's been rumors flying here, and I'm not one to yent them behind somebody's back. But we do address it. I asked John, what's going on? Rumors are flying. Are you in the crew? Are you out of the crew? John's going to set the record straight here, what really is going on. If people are making fake news, real news, You'll find all that out. Don't you want to know? I want to know the real dirt. Okay, everybody, let's see what Karabi's up to. New music, old stories, new stories, and much, much more right here on our playlist, Artist Rewind. Are you ready? Let's roll it. Roll it. Chalk and wax. Welcome, welcome. We got John Karabi coming right up here with his new music. It's called Kasi Bella. That's right. On Artist Rewind. He has a video out. He has new tunes. But who is this Kasi Bella? Who is she? What is she? Is she real? Beautiful. Exist. Welcome to the studio to answer these questions. The wonderful Mr. John Karabi. Welcome, sir. Welcome. What's up, buddy? How are you doing, John? I'm all right. Just uh, hanging out in Nashville and, uh, mm. you know, doing the interview thing and, and uh, promoting this new song. So That's just, uh, you know, doing what we do. You're doing what you do. Well, you know what? Thank you for coming here. We have a couple of people here that are a big fan of yours, and they're really happy to see you out here. And we got over here. Look at this. They're yelling your name. The crowd is going crazy. Look at Xandra. And she has a beautiful shirt, Talking Wax. Well, you can get that yeah. on our merch store links are in the description below but enough of me it's all about john so john i need to know some stuff here we got mitch weissman here the fabulous mr paul mccartney from beatlemania mitch nice to see you here thank you for being here donnell is here as well thank you donnell good to see you everybody is here they're rock and rolling audrey says hello mr karabi that's right hello, Teresa audrey. says hey stefan and john would somebody tell debbie Mulder where is she we need her here you know, Debbie, Give her time. Right? She'll show Give up. Time. 
All right. She's a wonderful part of the show. She's a big fan. And uh, Debbie, we love you wherever you are. Thank you all for being here. Thank you very much. Now, John Karabi, what is going on? I got to ask you some personal questions. We're going to get into all this stuff. Got a lot of stuff to cover and uncover. Are you ready to be exposed? Yep. Ready, right, ready, ready, ready. Let's talk about who is this chick, Cassie Bella? What is, oof. yeah. Tell me about this chick. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So the song, the, the song, when I wrote the song, the chorus says, she's so beautiful. And it's kind of about, um, you know, for lack of a better term, it's about a guy rethinking, like, you know, with a girl, for whatever reasons, it doesn't work out. And he's, and he's thinking like, you know, I was a dumbass. Do you know what I mean? Like she was, she was pretty fucking awesome and you know, whatever. And she's moved on. She's with somebody else now. But, um, you know, when I wrote the lyrics, I was sitting there going, okay, she's so beautiful. So I was going to call the song So Beautiful. Mm. And then I, I just started looking at it going, oh, man, So Beautiful is just kind of average. It's an app like, eh, it's not that cool of a title. So then I started thinking about it. And, uh, you know, I was even thinking like, well, Led Zeppelin would call songs this and never even mention that word. And so anyway, make a long story even longer. I basically yeah. went on to an app, like a translation app. And I typed in so beautiful in like 20 different languages. And I thought Casibella um, had a ring to it. So yeah. it, it basically it means so beautiful in Italian. That's beautiful. You know what? Here's, here's a few. Reverend Jenny says hello there. See, Reverend Jenny, he's talking to you, Karavi. Talk to all the ladies Jenny. out there. So beautiful. That's nice. Cassie Bell, huh? I was like wondering what's going on here. Now, does your wife say, hey, what are you behind this? You're married, you know, but behind the scenes, does the wife give you a you know, hockey china a little bit? Who's so beautiful, John? Why you? Who? That's no, about me. No, actually, my wife has actually said, Oh my God, if I hear that song one more fucking time, I'm going to kill myself. Like, seriously, it, she's been here like through the whole development process and then sending all the files to Marty and then Marty sending it back to me and then listening to make sure I liked it. And then the mixing process and the mastering process, she's like, I put it out. She's like, great. Now I got to hear it another, you know, 10,000 times. So it, it, she could care less who Cassie Bella is. <laughs> now, when you say Marty, Marty who? Who you say? Who you Fredrickson. Marty's working um, a lot of big cats. Yeah, he he. Well, he actually, I you know, I've known Marty God since I met Marty the first time uh, when I was in the screen. And then obviously he went on to. Uh, he started producing, I think the first band that he started, I could be wrong on this, was a band called Brother Kane, Damon Johnson's band. And then it, one thing led to another. He started working with Aerosmith and Motley and Def Leppard and Ozzy. And and now, I mean, it's great. He even does, you know, country artists like Carrie Underwood. And yeah. um, so we worked with him. The Dead Daisies uh, worked with him for... Uh, three records and then I, I just I said to Marty man I really liked creating music writing with him and not just as a producer as a writer he's great so um, I just said to Marty I'm like hey dude would you help me produce my record and he goes yeah dude absolutely let's do it mm -hmm. so it's been a little bit of a slow process though because of obviously COVID but um you know, we're moving along, we're doing our thing, you know, and in between Marty working with, you know, Buck Cherry or whoever he's working with, um, when he's got free time, he helps me mix, master, finish my songs and then go. So it's been cool. It's been cool. Who's who's in the band that you have now in your lineup? Well, right now, the definite ones obviously is Ian, 
who, by the way, told me to say hello to you today. Uh, um, great kid, which is John's son, everybody. And God, Ian's a fabulous drummer. Yeah. On everybody. And God, Ian's a fabulous drummer. Yeah, he's a good kid. Um, he's doing really well. Um, you know, so he he isn't going anywhere. And then I've had a bass player named Topher Nolan for God ten years. Um, the only I'd love to have Phil and Jeremy involved, my two guitar players, but they're you know they, it's weird they they started working with Gene Simmons in his solo band, and then Ace saw them with Gene, so mm -hmm. then he hired them. Mm -hmm. And Phil's also playing with Accept, so I, I, I'm not sure once I start doing shows if they're going to have free time. You know what I mean? So yeah. I'll figure that part out later. Yeah, you could always. There's all you know. Well, wasn't wasn't that my my uh, a good friend of mine used to play with Ace Frehley? You might know him. You know Chris Wisey? Yeah. Interview. How, how, how could I forget? You got your new music out here. We got this right here, Casi Bella. The link is going to be down below in the description. We'll check out that video. Now, John, if people want to uh, buy your music, where's the site they can go find everything? All the digital downloading places, iTunes, Apple Tunes, Amazon Music, um, where, wherever they can download it. And, and plus, it, it's a new new time right now. So anywhere it's streaming, it's on Spotify, yeah, yeah. iHeartRadio, um, you know, all those places as well, Pandora. Um, so it's it's kind of new, man. I'm, I'm trying to figure it out right now. Like, I, yeah. I don't really know how any of this shit works so um you know so we'll we'll see um it's kicking ass right now on on some of the streaming sites i just don't know if it's translating into actual downloads which is where the artists or musicians make their money you know what i mean so we'll we'll see it, it, things have changed where you know i it, it's funny like i i did i'm doing this you know first song and all these fans are you know they write to me and and they say things like, man, I still buy records. I hope you're going to do a record. I hope you're going to do a record. But the thing that they don't realize is in the grand scheme of the whole world, the amount of people that actually still buy the vinyl and still buy the CDs, that percentage is so fucking low. Um, you know, so then I, I again, I was talking to Marty and Marty even asked me, he was kind of the catalyst for this whole change in the way I do shit. And he said, why are you doing a record? And I thought, I'm like, is this a trick question? Or like, what the fuck? You know, I'm a musician. No, he goes, no, 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 no. He goes, why are you doing a record? He goes, really look at it. He goes, the bands like Kiss, Aerosmith, you know, all these guys that have been around forever, sold millions and millions and millions of records. They don't see the point in it anymore. Mm. Um. And so I, I stopped and I thought about it. So like I looked at the, the numbers for my acoustic record and my live album. And then even with the Dead Daisies, I kind of realized that most of the records that were sold, the actual product was sold either through Amazon, through each, you know, my website or the Daisies, through the websites, Amazon or at the shows. Um. So I said, okay, maybe I don't need to go in and spend, you know, thousand a day or two thousand a day for a studio. I learned how to use Pro Tools. I record the shit at my house. I get it as far as I can take it. Then I send it to Marty, and then we do the digital uploading, and, um, you know, let, do the digital uploading. And then once I do like four or five songs, then I'll do vinyl. I'll do CDs, and I'll sell them like everybody else, through mm -hmm. Amazon, my website, and at my shows. But right now, I'm not even playing. Like, I, I just had a bunch of shows. I was supposed to go to Mexico. Um, I, had, I had some shows with um, Molly Hatchet and Zebra. 
and everything got postponed again. Every, everything's Look. all wacky right now. Look who's here. Look who popped up in the chat. Debbie. Malibu. Hello, Debbie. How are you, darling? Hey, she is. She, I love freaking Karabi and his new oh, song. Mm, we're going to, you know, what? we're going to show a snippet of that song right now. Now we're going to do a little get to time with Karabi here as well. But John got his new music out here. We're going to check it out. I want you guys, please, please, you click in the links in the description. We could check out the new video for Kasi Bella and by John Karabi. John, are you releasing? You got more songs you're going to be releasing? Yeah, are yeah. I, again, I'm I'm eventually going to do a record in like CD. Vinyl. Are you doing it like more like a four, like a four, like like forty five now? Okay, let's do this one single out. No, it- I'm gonna. Okay. I'll do it. I'll do a record, but you know. I, I, there's a beauty in doing it this way. I do love the fact, like a lot of the fans have been very, very receptive and the reviews that I got on Casi Bella have been great, but they also say, wow, this is so different. It's not what I would have expected from you. I thought it would be heavier. I love doing this because there's no parameters. Like I'm not, I'm not in a band now. It's not the scream. It's not Motley. It's not union. It's not the dead daisies. This is just me writing songs, Mm -hmm. writing some lyrics, hearing it in my head and putting it out there. So there's a kind of a freedom or beauty that goes with it. But um, I mean, like I said, I want to do vinyl. I I haven't haven't gone completely away from the traditional way of doing things, but I'm just waiting till I get three, four songs, five songs out. I'll do the videos, put them out there for people to please download. Um, and And the streaming thing. And then once I get to that point, like I said, I'm going to do the vinyl CDs and I'm going to sell them on Amazon, my website, and at the shows. Yeah, merch too right now that people can buy from um, you? I'm actually working on a shirt um, that says Casi Bella on the front of it for women if they want to wear it. I thought it would be cool to just, you know, once they realize so beautiful, I thought it would be kind of cool. But I want, I'm right now I'm kind of, I'm trying to think of a really cool old school seventies faded, like something really cool that, uh, you know, or maybe even a, that a shirt with a trucker's hat that, uh, but seventies that a a chick would actually throw on with a nice pair of jeans and go out to a club or something and wear. Yeah. So uh, I'm, I'm working on it now. Very cool. That's very cool. Now we got the ladies in here, and I know all of them will be into it right now. Got, everybody's going crazy in here. I got to ask, uh, Zandra had a question, and uh, you know what? You have a question for Krabi? Uh, oh, she wants to know this one. Look at this popping up. I have a question for Krabi. Tell us a black story. How about this? A black story. <laughs> when can... does it end? When does it end? You know, Zandra, I'm glad that you put, put that up there because I was trying to download something and I found the ticket stuff and I couldn't send it to you guys. Um, but I found the ticket stuff from 1984, my first rap concert that I went to at Lamore's in Brooklyn. And Karabi, before we add the show, you were about to say that you actually saw that. So that was in June that I saw this show. I saw him in, uh, it was funny because this friend of mine, Johnny D, mm-hmm. who's played with Dora Forever and Britney That's Pop. It. Yeah, yeah. June, June 1st, 1984. More. I was the yeah. hundred, 163rd person at that show. And it was 19 and over, 1984. So and, that was and, all. You know, it's funny. Well, Johnny D told me about that band before they even, before their record came out. Mm -hmm. So Johnny had been to LA, I think in 82 or 83. And he told us, he's like, oh, dude, you got to go to LA. Now you were in New York. So there was lots of places in New York for original music. But where I was in South Jersey, Philadelphia area, there was only at that point, there was only maybe two or three clubs where you could play original material. All the clubs that were in the Philadelphia, Jersey, Delaware, you know, they wanted covers. So bands like me, Cinderella, we would go in and we would do mainly covers and throw an original in here and there. Johnny goes to California and he goes, oh, dude, you know, this is crazy. Like all these chicks are walking around with their fucking hair like out here and lingerie and 
every club you can play originals in. Okay. And then he came home and he had this EP by a band called Rat. On a street in, 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 in Philadelphia called South Street. Can't remember, can't remember the name of the place, but they did this. But they did this show. And so I went with Val, my ex-wife and Johnny D and one other person, like the four of us went. Oh, and, and Reggie, this guy, Reggie Wu, who played with Heaven's Edge. Oh, and wow. we went to go see Rat. And there was literally 30 people there. Wow. The tour. And they were doing a, like a radio show for WYSP. And um, we went and saw them and I was like, fuck, these guys are killer. They were great. California in 85. So the year after that tour that you saw, yeah. Um, I moved to LA. I did, you know, Scream, Motley, all that shit, and wound up playing for them anyway for like seven or eight years. Guitar. It, it, it. It, 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 it's, it's so crazy how this it goes full circle. Because actually, John, actually, you and me and Blotza did Angel City Outlaws. I filled in for Robbie Crane. Yes. It was you and me, we played Chicago, I believe, and it was um, Ryan. That was a that was a fun time. Yeah, we had a, yeah, there was um, we did a few shows. We, we did, we did yeah. a few shows, four shows. Yeah. That was a lot of fun. And I was thinking about it. I go, wow. And I look at Bobby. I'm like thinking to myself, 1984. Here I am with Bobby. I was a kid. I was a kid, just yeah. innocent, not jaded, just innocent kid. It was all fresh. And they were. I'll never forget that show. Lamores in Brooklyn was a narrow club if you, for people who don't know it. And it was Bensonhurst. The same neighborhood with Sinai Fever's film. A couple of blocks away was mm-hmm. 2001 Space Odyssey. So Lamores took over the heavy metal scene, took over the Guido scene. And um, back, there was a VIP section. And I'll never forget this. This was when Motley was opening up for Ozzy, Bark at the Moon. Mm-hmm. Tommy Lee and Nikki Six was just standing there the whole time and had some chicks and you could see the image and it looked like the, the same silhouette from um, Too Young to Fall in Love video, the way Tommy was standing yeah, yeah, yeah. there all lanky. And I was like, wow, there's Motley Crue. Here's Rat. This is the new music. And they weren't nobody. This is the beginning. And it was like, wow. And how that was incredible to say that I got to see that era. And uh, it was special. It was a special time. Yeah, it was it was weird, dude. I And I remember being in Philly because we were, you know, and I don't mean this in any disrespect because I love Philadelphia. I love yeah. New York. You know what I mean? Yeah. But we were always like, you know, the little the little city that wanted yeah. to be New York. You know what I mean? And we used to get the um, a bunch of my musician friends. We would get the Village Voice. Of course, yeah. and we would see the ads for Lemoore's and, and in beat. Take a walk down 62nd Street, where heavy metal lives. Welcome to Lemoore. Ah! Lemoore, the rock capital of Brooklyn, brings you the most explosive live entertainment every Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. This is where heavy metal comes alive. You haven't experienced heavy metal until you have experienced Lemoore. CBGBs and, and uh, you know, see all these bands like, um, you know, all the same thing. The, the the national bands that would play Philly would play New York. But there was also the bands like Kicks, um, White. There was a band called White Tiger. There was White Lion. There was Twisted Sister. And we always used to just read these ads going, man, we got to go to New York. We got to get up to New York. There's way more places to play. But it was it was a little clicky. You you know you couldn't come from 
whatever and get it was it was a little difficult it was a little of a click and it's funny you say that because every thursday night there was a band called tt quick and they yep. played Remember Lamar, as well. Met metal man which now i believe the singer plays with except but supposedly that guitar player's name dave uh DePetro, maybe his name is supposedly he was zach's guitar guitar teacher or something like that he was like this hot shot because zach wild was young this is way before ozzy so you're talking about 83 84 you know um but there was a whole nother scene i got to see twisted sister and they would end with it's only rock and roll and uh all that stuff was great times the village voice and you'd see the ramones o- over there play and uh then fast forward the page here here we are john you know you get the b and motley crew there's the guys i'm looking at i see the ramones i get to play with dd ramon this is these this is just crazy how everything turns full circle you now, know it's funny, i i i did a book as well that's coming out hmm. next year um it's called horseshoes and hand grenades and there's a story about how small the world is like in the music world as big as it is hmm. it's very small as well and for a very brief period of time, I was in I was in a band called Cathedral in New York with a guy named Mark Cunningham. And Mark was actually uh, the guitar player. Uh, he was a replacement guitar player for the Rick Derringer band. Okay. So initially when Rick had the band, it was the initial band was Rick Derringer, Danny Johnson, and then he had Vinny Apice wow. on drums. And uh, God, what was the bass player's name? I, I can't remember right now. But um, so Danny left. Mark Cunningham goes in. And um, so I, I wound up joining. They they wanted me to come up and, and audition as a singer. But I heard this band, Cathedral. I heard their their demo tapes and i was going are are you crazy like the guy that's singing on there was a guy from long island new york named tommy faris so i went up and i became the second guitarist and trading off vocals with tommy and backing vocals kenny aronson thank you mitch um so um but it was funny like so we did this thing it's it's crazy how small the world is. So we started doing this thing. We were going in. We were going to do some recording. Cathedral had been on tour already with Aerosmith, and we were possibly going to go back out again. Something happened. The manager, Mark's manager, was a guy named Paul O'Neill, who worked for Lieber Krebs. Okay. If you remember that name, they of did course. Ted Nugent, Aerosmith, like all these great bands. Mm-hmm. Uh, Paul O'Neill worked for them. He was like an intern or something, you know. So anyway, Paul started managing a band called Heaven from Australia. Well, Mark and this bass player that we had at the time, Dennis Feldman, left and went to Heaven. Who Heaven was the original band to do Knocking on Heaven's, the cover of Heaven's Door. Yes. Before Guns N' Roses. Yes. That's right. So, Now I've got it like now, you know, Mark is in there. Dennis is in there. Heaven. Now fast forward 20 years later. Here's one, one little thing. The sound man for the dead daisies. Who I bust his balls all the time. This guy, Tommy Dimitrov, was our sound man, but he was actually the drummer in heaven. Okay? Wow. Wow. And fast forward a little bit more, the drummer from Cathedral says to me one day, hey, dude, there's a band in L.A. They're looking for a singer. Um, Can't really tell you who it is right now, but they're looking for a singer. Um, why don't you put a resume? I think you'd be great for the band. I go, okay, cool. And I was a dumbass, never done a resume before. So I, I just literally, it was like, dear, whoever it may can, you know, I should have just wrote it in crayon. It was so primitive. So I send this resume to Mike with a 
really bad demo tape. Mike's going to forward it to this band's manager. Only to find out, fast forward to 1993 or 4, I'm in Motley. Nikki's going through an old box of shit, like clothing from, you know, different tours and all this other shit. And there's the fucking envelope with my name in it from 10 years before that, when Vince got into that car accident with Razzle. With Razzle. The lead singer of the heavy metal band Motley Crue was back in court today. He was ordered to begin serving a 30-day jail sentence for manslaughter and drunk driving. 24-year-old Vincent Neal Wharton will surrender himself at the Gardena City Jail on July 14th. Last July, he pleaded guilty to manslaughter and drunk driving charges in the head-on crash of his car in December of 1984. A passenger in his car was killed, and two others were hurt. In a plea bargain arrangement, Wharton was ordered to pay $2.6 million to the two injured victims and to the estate of the passenger who died. Jerry. They were There was a possibility he might do jail time, so they were looking for singers. So Mike sent this tape into Motley Crue for me as of whatever, and then fucking 15 years later, I wound up getting a gig anyway. That's so wild. It, it was so crazy, dude. Oh. So, yeah, it came to complete shock to me and... Uh, just happened a few days ago? Yeah, just uh, actually two days after my birthday. It's like, happy birthday, Vince. Jesus. Yeah, but hey, that's okay. Well, I don't understand now. Uh, what's the vote? Did y'all come in at the same time so everybody has an equal vote? Is that what it is? Yeah, I mean, the way we had the band going was like everybody uh, had 25% input in everything. Mm -hmm. And um, so 75% voted me out. And that was the 25% that... See, it's weird for little kids but, all across know, America yeah, to hear I... business considerations <laughs> with Motley Crue, because, you know, they think you and Tommy just hang off the roofs yeah. together at night. Well, you so. know, they're, they're great guys. You know, I, they just had to do uh, what they felt they had to do. And... Um, this seems real risky to me, though, because re really, you seem pretty interwoven into the fabric of that band. Who, do they have any idea who they're going to replace you with? Not uh, David Lee Roth, for God's sake. Oh, <laughs> You never know. You, know, you really never know. Um, I don't know. I, he I heard they're auditioning people right now. Yeah. But, yeah, we'll see. Well, I don't know. I don't know how it works for kids now. Since uh, Van Halen, we, I guess we have a lot of kids here. Since they replaced, the, upset the apple cart there, do you like the band just as much with Sammy Hager? <laughs> <Same? laughs> wow, that proved nothing. But, uh... So the, the, the music business is so fucking small. It's and so it's weird small. how you end up like, you know what I mean? Kind of so, right where you were blown. So, so there was a tape that Nikki found or was it a letter that he found? It was a tape and it, letter? It was, it was like the letter with the envelope and I'm looking at the thing and I'm going, you know, I have my name, Karabi, you know, 3156 G Street, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. But I, I you know, this was 19... 92 or three yeah and i had sent the fucking letter in like 84 wow. or whenever the fuck it was that they were looking for singers how funny the first time and i'm like dude this is me and he's like what you know it was it was weird it was that, really is, that, weird. Is, that is funny man that's a funny story now how did you get how did you know i don't think i even asked you you probably told so many other people but the, the crew how did you get the phone call or the audition for the crew I know you were playing with the Scream and you were back east, right? No, we were. Were you in LA? Yeah, we. Scream? I mean, the oh, wait, you moved. No, you moved to LA. I you was in LA. Yeah, I, with, I was with living in those LA. guys in Angora originally, right? Yeah. I was in LA. I moved there in '85. Okay. Um. You know, so I had been there, fuck, four or five years. And, you know, it's come now, it, you know, whatever. Impl Angora just imploded. I did the scream. We had been on tour for maybe eight or nine months. And, you know, you've toured before. So, you know, like, you don't tour and just you're not on the road nonstop for like a year or two or three. You go out on what they call legs, you know, whatever. So we had done nine months of touring. It was um, probably January of 92. We were in like New Mexico or Arizona, the screen. 
and we're coming back to LA. We had a day off in LA and then we were playing the last show of that leg of the tour at a place called um, the Marquee Club in Orange County. So the last show that we did before we got home, this fan gave me this magazine and said, hey, dude, check this out, man. Nikki Six loves your band. So I was get, walking to the stage. So I grabbed the magazine. I looked at the picture real quick. And I said, is this for me to keep? Yeah, fine. I threw it on the bus. I did my show. And then we leave. At the end of the night, we get on the bus and we're riding back to L.A. And we were kind of tickled that somebody in Motley Crue was like raving about the scream. So um, I got back, went to sleep, obviously caught up on my sleep. Next day, I'm getting ready to go do my show. And um, I just went, you know what? I'm, I'm just going to call Motley's management and leave a message for Nikki to say thank you for the plug. Hmm. Maybe I can do some writing with them in the future for this next Scream record. So I do the thing. I picked up the phone, made the call, left a message with this girl that worked at the office. And she was like, oh, give me your number. So I'm like, yeah, sure. They're going to call me, <laughs> whatever. So I, I left my number and I shit you not like it wasn't five minutes later, my phone rang and it was Tommy and Nikki on the phone. And they're like, Dude, blah, blah. conference call. They conference no, call. they were in the they were on. I was on speakerphone. They were in Nikki's fucking car. He had a car phone. And so I was. Oh, on my God. Phone. So they're talking to me. They're like, hey, dude, blah, blah. It's Tommy. It's Nikki. You know. Um. So we're just chit-chatting for a minute. And then just out of left field, they go, hey, dude, here's the reason why we're calling. Vince is out. And I go, wait, wait, run that by me again? Vince is out of Motley Crue. He's gone. Done. He's out. Um, we want you to come down in a couple days and just jam with us. And I was like, what the fuck? Are you fucking kidding me right now? You know, so it was just this weird thing. And then it was like over the weekend of waiting. I'm sitting there like at that point, I had zero Motley Crue records. So I'm like running around just borrowing shit, just trying to listen to everything I could. And then um, I just went up. I told Nikki to please have the lyrics there. OK. And I walked in and we just jammed. It was like a Monday. Do you remember what do you remember what you guys did? You guys like warm up on some covers or anything like yeah, that? Yeah, we did. I well, that was the ones I knew from you know, I knew they did smoking in the boys' room, which was an old Brownsville station song. Yeah. Um, and I knew they did jailhouse rock, which obviously Elvis, mm. uh, and then uh Helder Skelter. Beatles, which uh, yeah. which we used to do at the cat club all yeah. the time. Yeah. And I just said, you know what, fuck it, let's start with these three. And then we'll just take it from there. So, so we did it. Did you do Health to Skelter last? You remember? Was no, I did it first. Oh, you did it first. So we did it first. And the funny thing is, I I sit there. You know, they're like, -na 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 and I just start fucking singing. I go, when I get to the bottom, I go, and you know, the part where the band kicks in, that ah! Tommy stops playing, and he puts the sticks down, and he goes, dude. He says the sound guy, turn him down. And I'm, you know, I'm fucking like, oh shit, did I fucking hit a wrong note or like what, you know? So then did it again, same line, same spot, boom, hit the note. I fucking lay into it. He stops again. He goes, turn him down some more. So fucking turn him down. And then he's just, all right, fuck it, whatever. Let's move on. So we did. Jailhouse Rock, gang, 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 and I'm, I'm born air. I start singing, and we did like right up to the chorus. Everybody stops, and I'm just like, I'm fucking dying here. Like I'm just sinking ship. Never gonna, you know. We did smoking in the boys' room, and then Nikki goes, "All right, enough of the covers. Like try one of ours." So I think we did like Live Wire, Shout at the Devil, and. Something from Feel Good, I don't remember. And they're like, okay, cool. 
That was it. Can you come back tomorrow? And I go, um, yeah. I've never auditioned for a band before. I guess this is how you do it. And I went back the next day. At the end of the day, they were gonna they were gonna call it a day, like after the jam. And I kind of talked everybody into hanging and let's just jam, jam. Like I grabbed a guitar. They were freaking out that I could play. And we went up sitting and we sat down and we wrote like almost. So they had no clue, John, they had no clue that you could play guitar. Because when... wow. I didn't play in the scream. Yeah. All the videos, I was just fronting the band. Wow. Um, so I, I, you know, when I, I started playing, I was kind of noodling, doing some solos. I, I was actually curious about Mick's guitar rig. It was so huge and he had all these pedals and other things on there. So I was, I said, Hey, can I check out your guitar, dude? And he handed it to me and I just started playing leads. And that's when they were like, what? Okay. Wow. This guy plays guitar. And I'm like, yeah, I've, I've always, I started as a guitar player. I, I backed into being a singer. I was a guitar player. So, and then we jammed and we actually wound up writing a couple of songs that night wow. or most of them. And th th so then they leave the room and they come back and they're like, dude, doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure this out. You're the guy. Welcome to the crew. And I was like, uh, okay, this was not in the script. I just wanted to write a song with you guys, Yeah, you know, and it was just, it was crazy to be honest it you're was, gonna have to prove yourself yeah and we, we, we like Cruz that sounds like a new band is exactly. basically a new band yeah, exactly i mean first new sound <clears throat> you know we we always said we would break the band up if anybody left you said it i said it well yeah. we said it as a band you know yeah and the thing is the last well it had just sort of deteriorated and when vince did leave the band yeah i remember the conversation was me and, and mick and tommy we, we were devastated we were bummed out it wasn't like we were celebrating Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I get a lot of mail from kids that are like, you know, how, how, you know, they can't use the word that they use, <laughs> but, uh, you know, how bleep it is of, of me or Tommy or, or Mick to have done what we did to Vince. And, and the truth of the situation is he, he did, it, he to did it to himself. He, he left the band. And so we were forced with, the, you know, the, the decision of quitting, breaking the band up. Or do we still want to make music together? Because yeah. it's basically we're not done, man. No, we're absolutely we're not. Still, we, we love each other. We're best friends. We, we, we still write some of the best music of our lives together. If, if uh, there was no more music coming... Because the only difference or, is if you would have changed the name, people still would have said, oh, have you heard the band that you Blank see. that's got Nicky and Tommy yeah. and Mick from Motley Crue? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they still would have said... So we, we, we said we owed it to ourselves to at least see what it felt like, you know? At times when Vince was uh, out of town or off doing whatever he was into doing, Sebastian Bach would come down and hang out with us, and we'd be rehearsing. We'd need a singer to rehearse, so he'd sing. Uh, Steve Perry from Journey came down one time just to hang out and, and, and meet everybody, and he was singing. And so we kind of had the feeling of what it would be like to have a different singer, and, and we said, you know, the least we can do is try it on for size before we, you know, end it. And when we met John, it was magic. <laughs> it was fucking insane because that was like, again, it, no disrespect to any of those guys, but a large portion of the 80s music that came out, the Motley Crues and just all that stuff, I didn't get it. I was into Grand Funk, Zeppelin, Queen, Beatles, Stones. You know, we, 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 we played most of this shit at the Cat Club. Yeah. So a lot of the stuff from the 80s, other than Tesla, the Black Crows, a few bands, Kingdom Come, um, like other than those bands, most of it went over my head. I didn't get the whole sex, drugs, partying. I was more into the 70s shit. So mm -hmm. I just went to write. I knew that they were a big band. I just wanted to say thanks, and maybe we could write a song for the next Scream album or Vice, or maybe their record. But I totally did not expect that to happen. Yeah. At all. Wow. That's a pretty cool story. I mean, you must have, when they said, welcome to the crew, how did you walk out? Like when you're like walking out to your car, what were you thinking in your head? You know, it's like, I kind of, I mean, I was in a band. I was in, in a yeah. fucking band that I thought was great. It was that thing where it's like you're married and then you go fucking cheat on your wife. You're like, did you feel like that? Did you feel like that you go wash my ball somewhere before I go home? <laughs> you know what I mean? It was weird. It was, I was like, I totally didn't see this coming 
at all. Now, did the, now you, the guys from the stream? Did you tell them, hey, I'm going to go jam with them or whatnot? Did they? Did yeah, they go... and and you know, they were. It's weird. It was kind of a weird thing because in the beginning, they understood it and they were really supportive. And you know, my mother had just been diagnosed with cancer. My mm-hmm. son was just diagnosed with diabetes, and I mean, we were a new band, so. Mm-hmm. Fuck, if we were making $300 a week on tour, you know, that was it was nothing. It was, you know, so, um, you know, at that point I was living, it was me, Val, Ian, little Val, my daughter, and two dogs in a one-bedroom apartment in Hollywood. You know, so this the guys were like, dude, this is a way, this is your way out of here, man. You can take care of your family. You know, you're, you know, so they were supportive, but then something happened. Like as time went on, they became really negative about it. You know, like I caught a lot of flack from the guys from the scream for being, uh, for bailing. Yeah. Yeah. But, but I, I, in, in hindsight, I think it was because, Maybe, and this is just me Monday morning quarterbacking. They went on to do a record with Hollywood Records. They did a video. And then for some apparent reason at the 11th hour, Hollywood went, we're dropping you. And then they were left holding the bag. Um, So I I can kind of see how it was a delayed reaction where they went, you know what, fuck you. Like I saw the drummer Walt once at a place in uh, Birch Hill, New Jersey. Um, the, the club was called Bert. Um, I think it was called the it Birch, was Birch, Hill. Birch Hill. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. And he came to the show and he was really kind of cool in the beginning. And then I did, I was with Union and we did Man in the Moon and I dedicated it to him. And uh, he got really upset and he just flipped me off. He goes, fuck you, you ruined my life. And he left. Wow. And I was like, fuck. And unfortunately, I never really had a chance to patch things up with him because he passed yeah. away like seven, eight, nine years ago from, you know, whatever. Mm. But, um, yeah, so they were supportive in the beginning, but not so much later on. Later on. You know what I mean? Like, hey, good luck. Hey, this is your ticket. But really, it's like holding on to that chick. You know what? Yeah. But, well, yeah. and, it, it, and initially – me joining Motley would have been a beneficial to them. Of course. Part of the deal was Hollywood Records said, we'll let you have this guy, but we want a million dollars. They had to buy me out of my contract. So they they were paid a million dollars. And then Motley had to agree to take the scream on tour with us. The problem of it is, was not Motley, it wasn't me, it wasn't whatever. Hollywood Records decided at the 11th hour to drop the band from their label, and everybody in Motley's camp was like, why are we going to take a band out that doesn't even have a new record out? Like, it, it makes zero sense. So none of it panned out for the screen. Do you know what I mean? But I, I really had nothing to do with it. So... So now, John, look over here. Here's Yentatan. I'm going to pop this up here, and I want you to explain this. The internet, there's rumors going around. There's rumors, okay? I didn't make these rumors up. Look at this, John. Can you see Yentatan? There's a site out there that reported that Molly Crew base is Nikki Six, right? Behind closed doors to Vince Neal. If Nikki's de- de- to demanding to Vince to lose at least 50 pounds before they are scheduled to make their live comeback in the summer of 2022. If Vince fails... Then he's going to be replaced by ex crew singer John Karabi. What about that story, huh? Look at look at the look at the expression on the host's face. Look at that, look at John. Oh my lordy, 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 John. I need a scoop. Come on, is there a scoop here, John? There Are is. You hiding Listen, something? Okay, put it back up again, and let's talk about this. <laughs> let's talk about this. John. Okay, what's going on here? I'm pretty sure line one. The Metal Den has reported. I don't even know who that is. I want to know who is the Metal Den. The Metal Den. <laughs> who are these people? But this Listen, is- 
if if CNN or Fox News or MSNBC or fucking K, you know, KNAC or KOS or one of those, if it, you know, if it gets to that point, great. Yeah. Um, but I, there is, I, I can honestly tell you, you can take it down now because I'm throwing up in my mouth. Why? Look at look at the look at the face. Look at the face of well, like the face, the face I can deal with. It's look at the, the face. Oh right my here. god! Oh my god! Get the time. Get the time's a good show. story to tell you you like a little yenta yeah 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 yeah. explain me this what's going on here john (laughs) i can honestly tell you that there is zero chance in hell of any part of that becoming true nikki six will burn himself alive in Central Park before he picks the phone up and calls <laughs> yours truly. And if he did, <laughs> yours truly would just go and just, it's never going to happen. Never going to happen. Zero chance. Yeah. See, Audrey, t- is, we got the info here on, on our show here. The Metal Den, apparently a hard rock promotion site on Facebook. Okay. Okay. There you go. That's what we found out. So it is not true. It's a made up story. You got it here right now. This is the place where we get the facts. It's it's the ultimate, intimate conversation that tells the truth to everybody, Adika and his friends, John yeah. Karabi. John, and let me let me show you this Monet I have on the wall over there. Oh, I like that. Yeah, because everything on the internet is true. That's what you know. I actually like that. I like your little setup there. John Karabi's new music is out right now. Everybody, look at this. You're gonna get it. You're gonna listen to it. Cassie Bella. John Karabi. Casabella. Out now. Click on the link in the description. Check it out. Support it. Buy a shirt. 70s style. Make you ladies look great. And make those men want you even more than they want you now. John Karabi. Do I know how to sell? Always be closing, baby. Always closing. Thank you, John, for being here. Thank you for having me, Mr. Adika. I'm that- I'm I'm very honored that you could actually call a peasant like me after you've had the the greatest, like the Mark Farners, the Jack Douglases, the Doc McGee's, you know, the Gene Simmons, the Eric Singers, you know, and and you've wasted some valuable time on a peasant like myself. No, you're the best, Karabi. You're, yeah. the, you're the best out there. You're a good friend. And you know what, man? You're great. One of the great singers out there and a uh, great musician, great guitar player, great dad, grandfather. Yes. That's all it. of the above. Great and, husband. And, and same it. to you, my friend. Um, right. You're one you know, of the, we have, one of the good. We definitely have some history. We've shared some stories all oh. the way from Eddie, Eddie Van Halen's house to... <laughs> Eric Dover leaving his guitar in a hotel <laughs> lobby. Oh, my God, John. I want to thank John Karabi for spending the evening with us and sharing his stories and his new music with us and also for setting the record straight of those rumors of the crew. Also, if you want to check out John's new music, Casa Bella, and much, much more, in the links down below, please click on that, and that will lead you right there. Most of all, I want to thank you for spending the time. And don't forget, everybody, if you did enjoy what you found tonight, Put it in the comments below. Your feedback matters. And also, check out other playlists out and all that good stuff. Don't forget, hit that subscribe button if it's your first time here. And thumbs up always. Now, at this point, it's that time. We're going to call it a night. Stop right there, everybody. <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't think I was going to leave you that way, right? No, no, no. Right over here, you'll find something a little over here and there's something a little over there. So click here or click there for other past episodes. All righty. Now, 
Get out of here, you crazy kids. What are we waiting for? <laughs>